Hey guys, how's it going? Kermodi here. In this video, we're continuing our beginner Ableton course by taking a look at automation and internal clip envelopes. Now, before we get started, if you haven't already downloaded the beginner Ableton sample pack, make sure to do so because it's going to give you everything you need to take these techniques or these ideas and put them into practice. So we've got a lot to cover. Without further ado, let's get going. So automation in Ableton is the concept of making parameters move over time to become part of your musical composition. For example, right here we have a beat loop here. And what I'm going to want to do over time is automate this filter cutoff to move in over the course of my composition. Now, to do that is actually quite simple. You can take any parameter inside of Ableton and right click it to show its automation. A red dotted line will appear for this parameter, and this can happen for multitudes of different parameters inside of Ableton. And then what you can simply do is click to add a dot and click to add another dot and drag it. And you'll see this dot has a value from the lowest value to a high value to move that parameter over time. If I hit play, you can see that parameters become part of our composition. And we can do this with multiple parameters. You'll notice that whatever I automate last will override what's visible here. Now there are a few important tools you need to know. This automation can be copied and pasted uh, and edited like regular clips and other things. So Command C, Command V, Backspace will delete chunks. If you click and drag, you will override the dots and delete the ones you just dragged over. If you hold Command, you can actually curve that automation, which is really helpful. And do note that it snaps to your grid that's new to Ableton 10. And if you turn press command 4, it'll go off grid. If you hold shift, you can actually move in smaller incremental values. So you can get a little more specific. And those are some of your main editing tools for automation. Pretty useful. Now, if you want to be able to edit multiple pieces of automation at once, what you can do is right click a parameter to show automation in new lane. So now you can see we have both different types of automation here. So we can copy and paste them around together as a unit, which is pretty helpful. Or if you want to clear all this, you can press this button here. This is automation mode. And what this allows you to do is go back to just the clip editing mode. So we're just moving the clip around instead of automation. Or you can toggle it again to see your automation pop up again. Alternatively, if your keyboard isn't enabled here, you can press A to toggle between that, which is really helpful. So now you can quickly toggle between audio editing mode and automation mode here, which is really nice, quick, and handy. Lastly, alternatively, the last way you can get to your automation as well is through these drop down menus where you can pick your device, auto filter, and then see what's automated inside here. You'll notice a red dot appears in the drop down menu as well as on the device so you can see when it's automated. You can right click this automation to delete it at any point. And finally, you can also override this automation where say for example, we wanted to test out a different position for this resonance. Well, if we move it, you'll notice that the old automation turned gray. And what that did is we are temporarily overriding it. But then if we press this button, it'll go back to how it was. So it's kind of just a way of testing things out. So this is back to arrangement view right there. So that's pretty handy. Now there's one last thing too with automation. If you actually want to record it into your device, uh, what you can do is hit record. And with this automation arm button on here, what will happen is as we move this, you'll notice it gets recorded. And what's really nice too, a final editing way of a final way of inputting automation is if you enter the pencil mode, 
it will actually snap to your grid in a more step-like pattern, which is pretty helpful. So I'm going to delete that. Now, with that understanding of automation that it's moving parameters over time, there's one other way of moving parameters over time, and that's actually within the clips themselves. And the reason for this is typically when you're working in session view, well, how are you going to automate a parameter over time? Well, what you can do is you can do it within the clip, and you press this little uh, button here. You see the little envelope dots. It's the same as the envelope record button or the same symbol as the automation view right here. So this opens up internal clip envelopes or internal clip uh, automation, and it works the same way. You find your auto filter in the drop down menu, you find the parameter you want to record, uh, move over time, and then you actually move it within the clip itself. So if we look here, it's going to continuously do that, overwriting what happens on the arrangement view, simply hit back to arrangement view and you'll notice that disappeared. If you hit play on the clip, it'll re-engage. So that's actually quite useful. That's really nice to have it within clips, but it can get tricky where sometimes you can get lost. So just do make note of that if you do have internal clip automation. And if you record the clip onto your timeline, so hit record here, trigger the clip, records onto the timeline, it will record the automation that was in the clip onto your session, uh, onto your arrangement. So what you can do is you can create uh, internal movement within the clips in session view here. And when you record into arrangement, that automation will come along with you. So there we go, guys. This was a quicker video in the course. This was understanding automation, how it works, and how internal clip envelopes work. So thanks again, guys. I'm Kermody. We're almost done this course. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.